Coming up on Hands on Android, it is the end of the year 2020, and I thought, what better way to end the year than to show you some of my favorite apps? Hands on Android is brought to you from LastPass Studios. We know you're focused on security, but are your employees? Well, LastPass can ensure that they are by making access and authentication seamless, whether employees are working in the office or remotely. Visit lastpass.com slash twit to learn more. This is Twit. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Hands on Android. I'm Jason Howell. So uh, 2020 is coming to an end. We're at the end of the year, and boy, what a year it has been. So I thought I'd get a little introspective here on this episode and talk a little bit about apps. We've covered a lot on this show, from how-tos to tutorials and that sort of stuff. I thought I'd spend some time on what makes a good app, in my opinion, right? And this is going to differ for everyone because, well, we all have smartphones, and certainly you, just like I, have a whole bunch of apps installed on your phone that you consider like have tos. You consider these requirements for your daily smartphone life. When I test out a new smartphone, there are some apps that I absolutely make sure make it over to that smartphone because without it, it's going to slow me down or it's going to prevent me from doing things that are very very important in my life, or I just enjoy that app and I want to know that it's going to be there at a moment's notice. So for today's episode, I thought I'd take a look inside my phone and share with you some of the most important apps, some of the most uh, interestingly designed apps, unique apps, the ones that really I just have to make sure I have installed on my phone when I, when I get a new phone. So let's dive right in to some of my favorite apps. So first of all, let's start off with the apps that I absolutely make sure are on my device from the get-go and logged in, because if I'm not logged into these from the get-go, it's going to seriously impede on my ability to log into other apps. And the one right at the top of the list is LastPass. And yes, full disclosure, LastPass is a sponsor on the Twit Network. But uh, I promise you, they're in here purely because of the utility. I love LastPass as my password manager. And if I didn't have it installed on my device from day one, I would be so slowed down and I'd be screwed because I don't remember the password on any of my sites anyways. That, as well as the two-factor authentication app, Authy. This is the app that just works for me to log in one time, have all of my two-factor authentication uh, sites listed there in a nice graphical interface, and I can just, I, I use this all the time. I've just got it programmed inside of me to jump right into Authy, and especially when I set up a new phone for reviewing, LastPass and Authy are there from uh, moment one. Another one that would fall into this category would be Google Pay, because let's face it, there's nothing worse than getting to the grocery store and with it like a new phone pulling out Google Pay to pay for something because you left your wallet back at home and then realizing that you never signed in, you never got the three digits from the back of the credit card to log into Google Pay. And they've made some really nice design changes to Google Pay in recent weeks. So uh, definitely worth a look. All right, next up are Google apps that actually deserve to be there because as you know, when you buy a new phone, there are a ton of Google apps that are pre-installed uh, some of them, I think, at least in my usage, more important than others. So right at the top of the list for me has to be Chrome, uh, the Chrome browser. Of course, I'm synced across all of my accounts. It's so important for me <laughs> and my daily work to have that history synced across because I'm just jumping through so many different devices. And Chrome just is my my favorite browser on Android. I know that you can get more, uh, more privacy-focused browsers like DuckDuckGo, and they're they're great, but Chrome is my default. Um, also, Maps. I would not know how to go anywhere without Google Maps. Uh, I, it's like forever. It's been at the top of my list of favorite apps for Android, whether Google made it or not. I just I literally rely on it. It's made me bad at driving without Maps at setting my destination. So it's got to be on there. Photos, because I take a lot of photos. Google Photos is an excellent app. Of course, they're making some changes to the, the fee structure, and that's okay. You know, it's going to upset some people, but you cannot deny the fact that Google has done an amazing job with photos 
goes from a design standpoint, from a curation standpoint, from an AI driven tagging behind the scenes magic sort of standpoint. Photos is just a, a big Google flex. Um, also, Keep, I throw a lot of uh, small notes into Google Keep, Christmas lists, that sort of stuff. Uh, so I had to have that in there. The, the design has not changed very much, but it doesn't need to. It does the job perfectly for me. And then messages. And I throw that in there purely because I think in recent, in the last year, messages has really improved as an SMS uh, messaging platform, but also because of the RCS uh, being included and recently, you know, adding in encryption for beta users of the app. That's going to roll out to more people later. But um, it's just, I, I like that approach, what Google is doing there to have their own iMessage of sorts on Android. Uh, sure, there are more that would fall into this category, but these are my favorites. Um, now, st sticking with the Google theme, Google apps that deserve to still be there. And what am I talking about? Primarily, really, I'm talking about Google Play Music. Not very long ago, literally a couple of weeks ago, Google Play Music finally gave me the notice that said that it's no longer running, it's no longer going to work for me, and that I have to use YouTube Music, which is a sad day in the Howell household. I've realized that YouTube Music just isn't the right music app for me, and I want Google Play Music. I thought it did everything that I needed it to with the integrated you know, personal library with their streaming library online. It's a bummer that I have to give it up, but times are changing and I guess I have to. I also had to say the same uh, goodbye to Inbox. That was a couple of years ago, but still, it deserves to still be on my phone. Inbox, come back to me. Gmail is nothing compared to Inbox by Google. All right, so let's step off the Google train now and talk about some other app categories on my device. Favorite media apps. And right at the top of the list has to be Pocket Casts. The folks at Pocket Casts have been awesome. They've, they've just created the best podcast app, in my opinion, over the years. And I rely on it. I've got so many podcasts synced through there. It's just, it's a workhorse when it comes to podcast listening and it continually improves. And I love their design approach as well. So I'm really happy about that. Also along those lines, Audible of course, designed by Amazon. Audible has undergone some design changes in recent months. I would say in the last year, they've definitely uh, reinvigorated the Audible experience after a long time of kind of lagging and, and staying in the same old design paradigm. But it does what it does really well. I've got so many audiobooks synced on my account, and I, and I love turning to Audible to listen to them. And finally, because of the changes that have happened with Google Play Music and not liking YouTube music and everything, I'm kind of taking all of my music library in, and I actually featured this on an earlier episode of Hands on Android. So Plex and Plex Amp are two apps that I'm more and more relying on when it comes to my own music and my own media sharing and that sort of thing. Plex is such a great app and a great service to manage all of my owned media catalog. All right, this one's really more for me than I'd say for a lot of people. It has to do with songwriting and creativity because, well, I am a musician, or at least I aspire to be, and I have two apps that I use all the time, and I absolutely make sure that they're installed on my phone so that when inspiration strikes, I can get to work. And one of those is Evernote. Sure, this could be any note you know, cloud syncing note app, but Evernote has just been there for years for me. I've got hundreds of song ideas synced to the cloud. And, you know, when I have an idea, I just pull up a new Evernote note and I kind of sing the idea into the microphone and then save it there and tag it as yellow gold, which is, you know, how I write music, the, the name that I write music under. And then it's there for when I want to sit down and produce it on the back end. I've got everything synced to the cloud, no matter what device I'm using. I love it. And in recent months, I've added a new app to this arsenal. It's Dolby On. Dolby On is so cool. Basically, this is an app that takes the Dolby noise reduction uh, smarts and applies them to basically a digital audio recorder on your phone so it can reduce sound like a background noise or static noise, noise in your environment. And it takes the microphone on your device and just makes it sound better through their processing. So now when I have a guitar idea or a music idea, instead of going right into Evernote, I'll open up Dolby On, fire off a recording, let it analyze the sound in the room, and then 
you know, lay down my idea and then save that audio file into Evernote. So it's cataloged the same way, but the sound quality is so much better and it's easier to jump to later. I love Dolby On. And if you're a musician and really, if you just want a really good quality audio recorder, Dolby On is it. All right, the next one is an app that I love to tell people about because it's really changed our life in this household, and it's in the finance app department. It's called YNAB. You need a budget, and it's a budgeting app that just, it's its like budgeting but on steroids, and I've never been good at budgeting my money. Uh, my wife and I have struggled with it throughout the years. Once we started using YNAB and really committed to the YNAB process about, I don't know, at this point, about three or four years ago, suddenly, after a little bit of growing pains, our budgeting life, it, it was like roses and sunshine. Suddenly, we're saving money like crazy. We've got a vacation budget for when we can actually go on vacation again. Um, you know, Bills come along, and we don't have to like find the money anymore. It's already in the bucket, all saved away. It's such a great app, and I highly recommend anyone who wants to learn a new and better way to manage their finances, go check out, go check out YNAB. Another app that could have been earlier on as far as an app that I try to log into when I first set up a phone is a bookmarking app called Pocket. And the reason that I rely on this so heavily is, A, I've been using it for years, but it really ties into my workflow here at Twit. When I'm on my phone and I'm on Twitter and I see a story and I know that story is going to be good on a particular show, I share to and then I share it to Pocket. And it ends up on my pocket cloud list of articles. And then when it's time for me to produce that show ahead of that show uh, date, I sit down, open up pocket, and I take all those stories and put it into the rundown. So that's kind of my process. Pocket has been a lifesaver as far as like quick on the go marking of articles that I know I want to talk about. Um, alarm clock. Everybody has an alarm clock app, right? And there is one that ships uh, on Google's Pixel phones and, and, you know, Android phones always have an alarm clock app. I always end up installing an app called Sleep as Android. And I don't know, I just started using this years ago, and I think it's it's incredibly customizable. There's a lot of customizability to it, almost too much potentially if you want a simple alarm clock app. But I found that there were ways to have more of a smooth, slow rise option because I don't want an alarm that suddenly just blast me out of bed in the morning. I want it to kind of fade up from nothing and maybe a little bit of extra light. I want to be able to disable snooze. I do not rely on snooze. And the only way I know I don't rely on it is with the option to disable it, which sleep as Android allows me to do. Um, so it just has a number of those features that if you really take the time to take a look at the features, you can customize your alarm clock experience uh, really well with sleep as Android. On the news front, well, I, I will say I actually am back to Google with this one. Google News, I think, does a really good job at analyzing what I'm interested in, giving me those top five stories of that moment at the very top of my feed, and then giving me a whole feed down below that follows my interests based on what I've read in the past. And, you know, there are other categories and other places to go inside of Google News if you want to focus on things like politics and technology and that sort of stuff. But I just, I've, I feel like Google, you know, does what it does so well. It, it knows how I've used it in the past and gives me the things it thinks I'm going to be interested in reading. And Often it's very spot on. Another one that falls into this category is Nuzzle, which is an app that ties into Twitter's service. And essentially what it does is it takes a look at my the people that I follow on Twitter, and then it looks at the things that they've liked, that they've shared, and then it it uh, compiles them to say, oh, five of the people that you followed shared this article. And so it gives me a quick way to look at the people I trust, which are the people that I follow, and what collectively they're sharing. And if a bunch of them have, have shared one thing, then I'm automatically more interested in checking it out. I'm like, oh, all these people I trust you know, shared this article about such and such. I want to read that article, so I'm in on the story as well. Uh, so it's a really great app for that. And just a couple of games to kind of uh, round things out here. Sky Force, the Sky Force series has just always been a great shoot 'em up uh, game, kind of 1942 ish, uh, but uh, you know, again on steroids. I love that game, and I've played it endlessly. Uh, for the family, it's Heads Up. This is the game where you where you put the phone on your forehead with a clue of 
what you're trying to guess. So it might say Mickey Mouse and then everybody in the family sees the word and they try and describe it without saying Mickey Mouse. And I have to say Mickey Mouse. And, you know, it, it's just a lot of fun to play with the family. And then my kids would be lost if we're somewhere in their board and they couldn't open up my phone and find Dancing Line, which is a cool rhythmic uh, game uh, that is a lot of fun. And then, of course, Roblox, which they just cannot get enough of. It's kind of similar to Minecraft, but very different in other ways. And finally, rounding this all out, I tweeted out earlier uh, to see what apps you love. And I'm not going to go into too much detail here. I'm just going to list them. Beyond Pod, Podcast Addict, Waze, Slide for Reddit, First Light from Filmic Pro, Nova Launcher, Trello, the official Reddit app, which I actually do like as well, Dropbox, Fitbit, Threes, pretty fun game there, Zedge, Feedly, Firefox, Weatherbug, Pokemon Go, but only because it's addictive, they said, Audio Relay, Ubico Authenticator for two-factor authentication, Philips Hue, Nest, Nature Space, one password, touch calendar, and launch board. Whew. Okay. So then if you need some suggestions, there you go. You were the ones that recommended those and uh, you should check them out if you haven't already. Now, sadly, this is the last episode of Hands on Android. Have no fear though. All the stuff that would normally appear here on Hands on Android is going to forward over to Hands On Tech, which is another sh hands-on show, obviously, on the Twit Network. So head to twit.tv slash H-O-T. That's twit.tv slash H-O-T for Hands On Tech right now. Or you can subscribe in your favorite podcatcher of choice or jump out to YouTube and subscribe there. And you'll see all of this type of content about Android and all sorts of other directions uh, in the technology space on Hands On Tech. The big thanks to John Ashley, who has been instrumental to editing this show uh, for, the, for, for its run. Really appreciate your work, man. And I love what you've done with the show. So thank you. And thanks to you for watching and listening. And we'll see you uh, next time on Hands On Tech. Keep those hands on Android, though. See you later. Hey, what's going on, everybody? I am Ant Pruitt, host at Twit TV. Got a question for you. Have you gotten tired of how bad your photos are looking every time you post them to Instagram? Better yet, have you gotten yourself a new camera and you can't quite figure out why the images just don't look that good? Well, I have a solution for you. This is my show, Hands On Photography. Each and every Thursday, I sit down and share different tips and tricks that are going to help make you a better photographer and a better post processor. So subscribe today at twit.tv hop to learn more.